Welcome back, my dear crime lovers. This is another episode of the history of the American Mafia, brought to podcasts by Fabio Fabiano and translated and read by me, Grace Carlisi. I hope you enjoy this new episode. Today we're going to talk about Salvatore d'Aquila, or better known as Toto. In 1910, after the arrest and conviction for counterfeiting of the boss of the bosses, Giuseppe Morello, and his brother-in-law, Ignazio Lupo, better known in the mafia world as the Wolf, there was a power void at the head of the first mafia family in New York. The families were called to replace the position and elected Salvatore d'Aquila, named Totò, or Zio Totò, that is Uncle Totò, who at that point was appointed the boss of the American Mafia bosses. Born in Palermo in 1873, he arrived in New York in 1904 as a cheese importer. D'Aquila began his career in the underworld, working for Giuseppe Morello and Ignazio the Wolf, and operated in the Bronx. Not much information is known about his early criminal activities. From the archives, we learn that he was arrested in 1906 for fraud and once again in 1909 with unknown charges. In both cases, the accusations were withdrawn and D'Aquila was released from prison. As soon as he was elected, he secured the support of the allies of the Mafia families in the United States and tried to take over all the Mafia families in New York. It is believed that he had his loyal followers infiltrated as spies amongst the other families. He was described as a brutal and authoritarian man, and to demonstrate his power, he had ordered the killing of two men just for the sake of it. He was a very reserved and cautious person. However, despite his attempts and his acquiring of even more strength and power, D'Aquila failed to unite and control the monsters of New York City. Some Italian inhabited areas of Manhattan on the Lower East Side got out of hand. Among these were Morello's half-brothers Nicholas, Vincent and Ciro Terranova and their cousins Lomonte. It seems that in the attempt to keep the area which had rebelled against him under control, the murder of Fortunato Lomonte on May 23, 1914 was ordered. He was hit in the back by three bullets. The killer emerged from the alley from a block of flats and escaped the scene by climbing over a fence at the back of the building. Lomonte was immediately transported to the Harlem Hospital where he was reanimated. Despite the prompt intervention, Detective John Cassetti was unable to snatch the name of the killers from Lamonte, who refused to speak before he collapsed again and died. Doctors reported that the victim's brother, Tommaso Lamonte, on his arrival at the hospital, swore revenge for his brother. According to Nick Gentile, an Italian-American mafioso who wrote a book recounting his memories and the events he experienced in the underworld, the killers were sent by Toto d'Aquila and had indicated Umberto Valente and Accusio di Mino as material executors. The motive for the murder was aimed at weakening the Lamonti brothers. The murder could also be linked to the killing of d'Aquila's friend Giuseppe Fontana, who had been part of the mob for a long time in Morello's gang before being killed and had distanced himself from the gang, contributing to its weakening. Tommaso Lamonte, at 29 years of age, was killed along with his cousin Rose Lamonte on 116th Street. They were hit by gunshots fired from behind them. Tommaso died on the street, while his cousin at the Harlem Hospital, where she was vainly transported. For that double murder, the police arrested a 19-year-old boy named Antonio Impoluzzo, found in bed with a gun with the gun on him. In May 1917, Impoluzzo was executed on the electric chair 
at the Sing Sing prison. When Morello and Lupo were released from federal prison in 1920, D'Aquila passed death sentences against his two former bosses and ten of their closest allies in order to eliminate potential rivals. One of the condemned by D'Aquila was also his faithful killer, Umberto Valenti, also known as the Ghost, so named for his cruelty and his ability to disappear quickly after having concluding the executions. Valenti had by now assumed a privileged position and had made an agreement with Morello, who, in the meantime, had been released from the federal prison in Atlanta. Valenti, Morello and the Wolf, fearing the death sentence issued by D'Aquila, fled from the United States and returned to Sicily in 1921. On their arrival in Sicily, Morello and Wolf asked Nick Gentile for protection. He had a lot of credit among the leaders of the American Mafia and not only in New York but throughout the state and therefore managed to summon a new meeting in which it was established that Morello, renouncing the claims of absolute power over the New York Mafia family, would have saved his life. Therefore, he, Lupo and Valenti, returned to New York. Upon his return to America in January 1922, Valenti made an attempt to be forgiven by D'Aquila by eliminating his main rival, Vincenzo Terranova, Morello's half-brother. On May 7, 1922, the boss of the Morello crime family, Vincenzo Terranova, was killed in a shooting near his home on 116th Street. Valenti was suspected of being personally responsible and to strengthen the agreement with D'Aquila, he promised to eliminate Giuseppe Masseria, the new boss of the Manhattan Mafia, who, in the meantime, had become the leader of the Morello mob. Thanks to his slyness and good luck, Masseria survived, survived Valenti's assassination attempts. In turn, Valenti was killed in 1922 by Masseria's assassin. In the following years, D'Aquila's authority diminished, especially in New York, so much so that he retired to the South Bronx between 1925 and 1926. He moved to a house near the entrance of the Bronx Zoo. Although that was not enough, D'Aquila's enemies didn't forget about him. The man who had been the head of the bosses for 18 years was killed on the evening of October the 10th, 1928. The murder took place on the 13th Street as he left his doctor's office. The ambush was organised by those who knew his movements and carried out with great efficiency. There were three hit men to shoot. He was hit by nine pistol shots that killed him instantly. The killers were professionals, in fact, they did not hit his wife or any of the four children who were with him. The killers had also tampered with the engine of his car so that he would not have been able to escape. Giuseppe Masseria was elected by acclamation as the new boss of the bosses and kept Giuseppe Morello as his advisor. While some of those loyal to D'Aquila sided with Salvatore Maranzano, the leader from Brooklyn, originally from Castellanmare, the handful led by D'Aquila in the Brooklyn Bronx, was taken over by Masseria's lieutenant Al Mineo and his right arm, Steve Ferrigno. After the deaths of Mineo and Ferrigno, the Mafia family was handed over to Frank Scalise, during the subsequent Castellamarese War and was then sold to Vincenzo Mangano in the 1931 reorganization of the underworld. This mafia faction still survives today and it is known as the Gambino family. During this period of dizzy changes at the top of the American mafia, the element that genetically mutated Cosa Nostra took place that is, the Prohibition Era. It was the approval of the 18th Amendment to the American Constitution. According to this new law passed in 1919, the production and distribution and retail 
sale of any alcoholic beverages was prohibited in the United States of America. And you can find that story in another podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Stay tuned, the story continues.